Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth and I am very excited to film today's video because uh, I have here the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow Foundation is the newest foundation from Makeup Forever. I have it in the shade 1N100, uh, which is the lightest neutral shade. And I thought I would compare that to the HD Skin, which is the reformulated HD Skin foundation that came out sometime last year, maybe. So this has been a very popular foundation. Uh, I also have it in the shade 1 and 100, which apparently was Y205. Uh, so that is what that bottle looks like. And for the Hydro Glow, the outer box looks pretty much the same. I don't know why for this one they chose to go with the white cap instead of the kind of cap that's colored the same as the foundation. Uh, and this cap varies according to whichever foundation shade you have. Uh, but anyway, I have both of these in one and hundred. So, so I'm going to apply the new HD Skin Hydro Glow to one half of my face and the HD Skin to the other half. And I'll talk a little bit about the claims and everything as we go. So this new foundation uh, just launched at Makeup Forever yesterday, I believe, uh, and I paid for expedited shipping to get it here basically the day after it launched, which is kind of crazy. Uh, for skin prep, I'm going to use the Rose Ink Solar Power Luminous SPF 30 Serum. I have kind of my normal skincare applied. I didn't apply any SPF though, so uh, this is a nice hydrating base for dry skin. Also has a little bit of that SPF. Uh, I don't plan on going anywhere, so I'm just trying to get this roughly even there. Uh, I'm not planning on going anywhere today. I hope to get in about a 10 hour wear test. Uh, it's just after one o'clock as I'm starting to film this. So that would take us to about 11 p.m. So we'll see how it goes, see how eager I am to kind of get this off my face. I already did my eyes. As you can see, I used the Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction because I'm in a bit of a, a Pat McGrath phase at the moment following her show for Margiela. Uh, and then I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Corrector. I'm trying to use this one up. Uh, and she is doing a master class at 3 p.m. today, so hopefully all of her secrets will be revealed. So I did use the original HD Skin just a little bit ago, and I used it with the Make Reverse Emulsion. And even on my dry skin, I think it looked really nice. Uh, as we'll talk about, I think, I think the original HD Skin is probably going to be a little bit more adaptable. Okay, so while that is sinking in, let's talk about the claims here. Uh, so for the Hydra Glow, it is $47 for 1.01 ounces or 30 mil. I think this one only has a six month shelf life, if I'm reading that correctly. Yeah, and the original HD Skin had a 12 month, so that may be something to consider. Uh, let's see, does it say made in, both are made in France. Uh, I believe that is where Makeup Forever is based. Uh, so this one, it says skincare foundation with hyaluronic acid, an 86% skincare based foundation with medium coverage and a naturally luminous finish that hydrates, smooths, plumps, and brightens skin instantly and over time. Inspired by skincare sheet masks, this skin boosting formula delivers 24 hour hydration Blurring and glow. Ideal for dry, mature, and sensitive skin. And as I said, I have dry skin, leaning on the more sensitive side, and I am 38, so whether that constitutes mature skin, uh, I'll leave up to you. Uh, it says this foundation also visibly improves skin's texture and radiance after four weeks of use. The feather light texture melts into skin and is buildable for added coverage. Uh, they say it's undetectable, making your skin look like skin, but better for a flawless radiant complexion. And again, this is for very fair skin with neutral undertones. And uh, if you do purchase from the Makeup Forever website, uh, I got this free sponge 
uh, which I guess I'll use for the application today. I haven't wet it or anything yet, but apparently this has an $18 value, so you get a little bit of a, a bonus there. Okay, so that is it for the new foundation. For this guy, this retails for $45, so $2 cheaper. I don't know if that's because of the ingredients with this one being more skincare focused or if it's just inflation and it's easier to launch a new product at a higher price point rather than raise the price later on. Uh, so this says medium to full coverage. So the other one was medium and buildable. Uh, medium to full coverage, 24 hour long wear foundation. I'm not going to be testing the 24 hour claim. Uh, this guy doesn't say what the expected wear is supposed to be. So we'll see how they do for this little wear test. Uh, 24 hour long wear foundation that blurs imperfections and delivers a natural matte finish that looks like skin. Powered by our micro skin system, this iconic formula was developed to flex and move with skin for a transfer proof undetectable finish that looks just as good in photos as it does in real life. The lightweight texture is buildable to your desired coverage level and applies easily without feeling or looking cakey. Non-comedogenic, waterproof, and sweatproof. And they do specify, like I said, I think this is more adaptable, probably more kind of makeup artist friendly because depending on your prep, uh, for like a more oily skin type, you could go in with a mattifying primer and add more powder. It says for drier skin types, we recommend applying step one, Hydro Boost Primer, before applying HD Skin and using Mist and Fix Hydrating Setting Spray for an extra boost of foundation all day. So as we know, this kind of replaced the earlier HD Skin. I think a lot of people are speculating that this is going to be replacing the Makeup Forever Reboot, uh, which I've talked a lot about on my channel. Uh, this is a pretty old bottle. I think this is like almost four years old and I got down pretty good ways in this product. Uh, I did just purchase a new one of these from Makeup Forever because it was half off. Uh, so I may do a second comparison between these two if you guys are interested. Uh, so this is in the shade R208 for reference. Okay, so let's, now that the corrector and primer has kind of set in a little bit, you can see I still look very luminous. Usually I do go in with a very hydrating base layer uh, because I do have dry skin and it is January, but I'm not really planning on going anywhere today. I thought about drawing a line down my face, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not. So that is what the sponge looks like before it has it has two different textures to it this one feels it's still spongy but it's a little bit harder maybe like more silicone-y and i think they specify to actually apply the the foundation to this side so i don't know if this is less absorbent maybe uh, but anyway that is what it looks like before wetting that is what it looks like after hopefully it's about the same distance from the camera there uh, yeah, so this this side definitely does feel different. It has like a sharper edge that kind of It still feels harder. It almost feels like This is like the crust of a baked good. You know how it just gets that little bit harder and everything. So Yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay uh, Let's see hydro skin hydro skin glow. So I guess I'll apply the old one I'll apply the HD skin to my right side. I'll do that Okay, and just make sure I give it a good shake. And here goes nothing, so. Actually, let me do a little bit of the kind of liquid density test. Color-wise, they look pretty, pretty similar. I'd say the original HD skin, I'm calling it the original even though it's been reformulated. I think that the Hydra Glow is maybe even a touch, a touch cooler a touch more pink. They do specify that when you're selecting your shade that they should let it dry. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. And just for reference, I have a like sample size of R02 in uh, the HD skin. So I'll just go ahead and do a little sample of that as well. <laughs> you can't see it, but this is splattering on my shirt. Um, it got a little Jackson Pollocky up in here. Okay, so that is 
the HD skin in 1R02, I think it is. Uh, and then the other ones next to it. So yeah, I think I definitely am that one and hundred. Uh, it's interesting. This used to be R210, apparently. They kind of, I guess, redid their naming conventions, which just trips me up a little bit. Okay, so I said I was going to do uh, HD skin on the right side. Okay, so two pumps on the sponge and this isn't normally how I apply foundation so it feels a little odd. Uh, I think normally I would kind of dot it on my face and then blend out uh, and then if you have too much I don't know uh, I'm actually gonna I think wipe off that little bit of excess all right so taking the other end of the sponge uh, and I will use the same sponge on both sides Yeah, I feel like when I just use my finger to dot it on, I'm able to get a little bit of, I don't know, more diffuse allocation. This does feel overall firmer than like a beauty blender. I don't think you need to get this sponge to use this foundation. I just picked it up since it was, since it was included and it was free. So I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have too much kind of built up here you can see like you still see like some freckles and things kind of poking through uh, but it's definitely taken down my redness and yeah it may look maybe a touch yellow but I think compared to that <laughs> that shade it's definitely a better a better match and of course once I get bronzer and all that on so at least that amount i don't feel like it's too much uh, it's definitely going to give you some coverage it's not like a, a skin tint or anything like that uh, if you just use a really little amount and spread it out you could probably probably go lighter with the coverage uh, i just want to quickly check yeah it goes from one and hundred alabaster to one r02 cool alabaster and then there's warm alabaster i did note that the shade descriptions in this, there is one that says it has olive undertones, which I know a lot of people will be happy about. Okay, so that's basically where the line is in terms of the two different foundations. Um, my nose itched. So there's that. Uh, so going in with the glow, and I'm going to just try to basically replicate what I did more or less. Uh, so get some on the... Oh! Okay. All right. This, this shirt is going to need a full on wash. All right. So I'm just dabbing what's on here. Like I said, I think, I think two pumps was definitely too much, but I got a little pump happy. I think that's going to be enough for my, my face. So again, I'm just going to kind of wipe off as much of that as I can. Do you guys have any good, uh, laundry tips for Getting foundation out. I think dish soap is supposed to be a good, good option. So yeah, I think this is, it looks lighter, like in coverage, unless I'm just not applying as much. Maybe I do need some of that other, other foundation. I'd say that blended out uh, much easier. Yeah, and I think now that they've kind of, they're starting to set, right? So you can see that one is still looking a lot, a lot dewier still. It looks like it really hasn't set down as much. So in all honesty, this is maybe a foundation where I don't have anywhere to, I have a palette here. Uh, I feel like I'm a little bit more, uh, what's the word? Clumsy than normal. If you, if you noticed that I burned myself on a 500 degree oven a few days ago making bread. Uh, so this is my little palette that I'll use just to see if I can build up the coverage a little bit. 
I have a feeling already that if you like more of a skin tint, I think you really might like this new foundation because, like I said, it does seem very hydrating. I think you can apply it in a lighter, a lighter way. I mean, there's still plenty of glow there because of the, the skin prep I did. But yeah, they, they don't look too different really on the skin right now other than the coverage level. So I'm just going to kind of leave that alone for now and, and maybe do some brows and that kind of thing and concealer and then uh, we'll see what we need to do in terms of powder. Uh, so I do have some uh, Makeup Forever products. Uh, but not a full face. And because I really want to see how uh, the foundation wears, I don't want to combine these two new foundations with, with a lot of products that are new to me. Do you guys do your brows before or after foundation? I just dermaplaned my face this morning, so there's really no excuse for things not looking good, right? And I know I'm kind of touching up my nose. Okay, so for concealer, Makeup Forever did reformulate their HD concealer sometime last year. It was the Ultra HD and it became the HD skin. I've tried this and I didn't really care for it to be honest. Uh, so I am going to use the Fenty concealer instead. This is in 125C and I've used, I've used this a couple times. I originally bought a different shade and it was a little bit too light, I thought. So I purchased this shade, uh, but I did like the formula. So I'm just going to blend. And then I'll take the same sponge and just try to kind of remove any excess and any brush strokes just tap that in and I feel like the nose nose might be a bit of a mess today and that's how those are looking right now by the way so you can definitely see a difference in how they're set okay so let's go in with some contour so I'm going to use the milk contour and you know I thought about not doing anything on top but I don't know I kind of want to see how things play with it as well. I think there are advantages to doing it both ways, basically. Okay, so let's see. And I try to be careful and not like, uh, what's the word? Blend too aggressively. Because I don't wanna remove the product underneath. All right, so I think, I think we're ready for powder. Okay, so I am, I'm going to set underneath my eyes. I'm really trying to use this powder up uh, from Charlotte Tilbury. So just make sure there aren't any creases. I guess this will kind of serve as a wear test of this concealer as well. Okay, and then going in with my BK103, I think this is a bronzer brush, but I like to use it uh, for powder. So because there isn't much product remaining in this, I really have to kind of dig into it. Okay, so that is basically how things are looking now. And just setting the right side. I do like to set my foundation, even though I do have dry skin. I think in part just because it really helps uh, products blend. And that is why I kind of go out uh, with such a hydrating base. But like I said, if you wanted kind of a more natural skin tint type approach. So you can see just with that powder, um, things look pretty, pretty normal and actually pretty similar, which is interesting. I think looking at my face now, I do want to add a little bit of 
concealer. I always forget to bring it up right here. Okay, that's really just a personal preference thing based on my uh, face shape. All right, so I'm going to apply some of this Laura Geller bronzer. I think I really need to get a different brush for this one. So I'm kind of going the uh, full glam approach, if you will, but obviously uh, you could go in with a lighter hand and make it a little bit more natural. Just taking a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Just blend that a little bit. And for blush, I'm going to use the Pat McGrath Divine Rose. I feel like it went a bit heavier on the right side. I don't know if that was just my application. Just trying to buff a little bit. All right, and just to kind of see how this concealer does, I'm going to, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Charlotte Tilbury powder and this little Sony G brush and Usually I put some powder underneath the lash line, either powder or eyeshadow, just to help prevent any creases from forming. And then the Clinique bottom lash. And for lip liner, I feel like lips is one area where I feel comfortable experimenting a little bit uh, because Obviously, it's not the same as my face. Uh, I'm going to use the Makeup Forever pencil in Wherever Walnut. I have used this before. And I do have this little Rouge Artist lipstick sample in Sassy Rhubarb, which is really fun. Uh, I think this one will work. Hopefully, they still have this. I feel like Makeup Forever is one of those brands that is kind of reformulating a lot. I think Tom did a whole, uh, Hope Miss Tom did a whole like Makeup Forever brand review kind of thing. And I think half the products uh, they purchased were reformulated between time of purchase and the video, which is unfortunate, <laughs> such is life, life of a YouTuber. I think that's pretty, a little bit more kind of nude, neutral, maybe not as pink, but I think it's a pretty color. Okay, so, uh, and just to show you one more time before I wipe it off, that is pretty much completely set down uh, the HD skin, but there's still a lot of like slip to this one. It's not really setting. So uh, keep that in mind. And I mean, this one, you can tell that's going to transfer. This, I mean, a little bit transfers, maybe when it's a little bit not fully set down, but you can see how, you know, the texture is different. Like it feels stickier, if that makes sense. So, okay, so I think that's going to do it for now. I don't look as different as I thought I would. Uh, okay, so it's about 135. So like I said, hopefully at least a 10 hour wear test. We'll see how the, the day goes, but uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you guys think so far. I'll give you a little bit of a, a close up. Did I get mascara up here? Maybe. Um, but yeah, that is the HD skin. That is the HD glow. So my hair is mostly dry now. Um, all right, so now I can go wash my hands. Uh, so yeah, so I'll check back in with you guys later. All right, so it is about five hours later. It's about 6.30, so uh, I just wanted to check in 
kind of at the halfway mark here. So uh, looking fairly shiny on the forehead. Uh, I think what has stood out for me the most in terms of, I guess, the difference in wear, I think it's just, it's looking a little bit more kind of, I don't know, cakey and broken up on the HD side, I think, versus the new glow side. I mean, not by magnitudes, but I think there's definitely a difference. So after I did the first part of the video, uh, I did take some quick daylight footage, so you should be able to see that. And I have like a smoothie and an apple since then, uh, so I haven't eaten dinner yet. I wanted to kind of show you how things were looking. But yeah, overall fairly shiny. I think I will go ahead and powder a bit. It's kind of hard to, when you have such a, a large surface area of your face that you're comparing, it's a little bit hard to kind of I don't know, discern any differences, but I will say, I think the glow side feels a little bit more comfortable, uh, which you might expect uh, because it is designed for more dry skin. So just doing kind of an initial touch up. Haven't, haven't done anything since that last clip that you saw. So that is how we look powdered. And I did also want to give you a little bit more information that I should have given you earlier. Uh, so just a few things I noted looking back at the website. So the two products, the two foundations, there's a different number of shades for each one. Uh, so this guy, the I'm gonna call it the original, uh, there's 40 shades of this versus 36 shades in this. I'm guessing because this is supposed to be lighter coverage, they just didn't see the need to add in those additional four shades. So if you are one of the four shades that was excluded uh, from this new line, I think they have kind of a crosswalk of recommendations for you to try out. Uh, so that was one thing I noticed. Uh, they do also have a mini in this product like they do in this one. Uh, for the mini, I think there's only six shades per uh, foundation and uh, interestingly enough there is a 1N00 mini I didn't notice that when I was placing this order otherwise I might have gone for that but uh, or it wasn't up on the website yet maybe but but yeah there is a 1N00 in this product but not in this uh, both have 1R02 uh, so 1R02 is the lightest mini in this product so I thought that was interesting. If you want to try it at a slightly lower cost, uh, that would be $22 for the mini. Uh, and it will be in store at Sephora. I think it's going to be in store anyway. Uh, but it's going to be available on the Sephora website, I think on the 8th of February. So yeah, so I'd be very surprised if it's not in store, at least at some uh, locations. Uh, they also sent with my order from Makeup Forever a sample and this includes 1N14, 2N22, 3N40, and 4N62. Uh, so if you plan to purchase something else from Makeup Forever, you could potentially get a sample of at least a few shades. And some Sephora still do little samples of foundation. Some are a little bit weird about it post pandemic, but anyway, some I've had success getting a sample of. Uh, and the last thing, uh, they do market a particular brush uh, with this new foundation. Uh, I thought it was interesting that they included a free sponge, uh, but they do have a new number 118 foundation brush. On the Makeup Forever site, I don't think it's specifically linked to this foundation, although they do recommend using it. Uh, but on the Sephora website, it's called the HD Skin Hydro Glow Foundation Brush. So. Uh, I thought that was interesting, and that brush is about, I want to say, $45. So uh, that is an option for you as well. You can apply it however you like with fingers, with a brush, with a sponge. Uh, and then just quickly to talk about the ingredients. So looking at this one, first off, uh, so this one had some interesting ingredients. Um, it has water as the first ingredient, so it is a water-based foundation. It has lemon fruit extract as the second ingredient, which 
I was surprised to see that so high up. I'm not sure if it's a mistake in how they listed these uh, ingredients. Uh, but yeah, that's not normally an ingredient, especially in skincare that I'm super fond of, uh, just because it can be irritating. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. Uh, there's also isodidocaine, which helps things kind of spread out on the skin, it has glycerin, which is great. It has a hoba seed oil, uh, sodium chloride, salt, coconut fruit extract, avocado oil, vitamin E, and then it does have uh, dimethicones. It does have fragrance, if that is a concern to you. I don't recall it smelling like anything when I applied it. So if there is a fragrance, it's very, very slight. We do have um, sodium hyaluronate down towards the end, and then like titanium dioxide and iron oxides. So yeah, I thought that was kind of an interesting composition, if you will. Uh, the original, which is right here, uh, this one starts off with water and then it goes into methyl trimethicone, uh, which I'm guessing is a silicone. And then it does have alcohol. Uh, which is probably what helps it set down. It has isodidocaine again. Dimethicone is higher up in the ingredient list. It also has uh, glycerin, also has fragrance. Yeah, so I don't know. I just thought that was kind of uh, interesting. I'll put the ingredients of both kind of side by side for you to um, take a look at. But uh, anyway, that is how we're looking kind of halfway through. So now that we've powdered, Let me know which one you like. I think on the whole, both feel pretty good. I would say, I, I think my initial thoughts are going to um, prove true and that if you have more oily skin, you'll probably like the original, especially if you like a more long wearing matte finish. Uh, if you want something a little bit lighter, especially if you have dry skin, you'll probably like this a little bit better, so. Uh, that's it for now, so I will check in at the end of the night. Oh, and the concealer, I just took off my um, my sweater, but it's the same uh, check-in period. Uh, I am seeing a little bit of kind of settling into fine lines, if you can see that, but I don't know. In general, I think it's fine. I would rather have something be a little bit creamier than like totally desiccate my under eye area. Okay, so now I'm off for the next five hours. All right, so it is the end of the night. It is about 12.30, so we actually made it to the 11 hour mark, I believe. So uh, this is how things are looking. Pretty, pretty shiny, especially in the forehead. You can see both sides, I think, around the chin area have kind of broken up, so. Uh, I'll get as close as I can. I mean, the concealer, I think, still looks decent. I mean, definitely there's some settling, a little bit of crepiness. I think I actually want to, uh, I want to turn down the lights just a tad. Normally I have them a little bit lower at night than I do during the day, so uh, I think you know, with a slight decrease in the light, I think there isn't as much light bouncing off the shine, uh, just to give you a better sense. And yeah, the chin I think is pretty well worn off, at least in spots. Uh, and for dinner, we had quesadillas, uh, just for reference. So nothing like too all encompassing when it comes to the face. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll powder one more time for good measure. And so, yeah, still still kind of broken up around the mouth area, uh, but you know, at least it takes down the shine on the forehead. So, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I did watch the Pat McGrath live stream earlier today on Instagram. I was a little disappointed that she didn't do the blue eye look that like Gwendolyn Christie wore. Uh, as well as some of the other models, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, she was saying how uh, basically what they did was they used peel-off masks. There was a combination of them uh, that they diluted with water and some other ingredients, and then they used a, uh, what do you call it? 
I want to say air gun, but that doesn't sound right. Uh, anyway, a spray machine to spray the product on in layers and they dried it in between uh, with a hair dryer. Uh, but before that, I think they actually took some like special effects glue and used it around like the nose and the mouth and like other areas that were more prone to, uh, I guess, being disrupted from like talking and that kind of thing. So uh, anyway, I thought that was really interesting. Um, but obviously not going to the the effort of applying glue to my face. So anyway, uh, let me conclude uh, by just saying whether I think you should buy this or not. If you have oily skin, I'd say you probably don't want to buy this. And no matter your skin type, I think if you want a more matte finish long wearing foundation then you're going to want to stick with this one if you've tried this and you wish it were just a little bit lighter a little bit dewier on the skin then maybe check this one out if you're happy with this one i don't know that i would recommend getting this one because honestly i just don't think there's enough of a difference to really justify it yeah, I guess this this seems to be a pretty universal foundation, but if you held off on purchasing it because, like I held off for a while because I have dry skin and I thought I wouldn't like it. If you are in that camp and you want to try a foundation like it, maybe go for this one because I think there's those slight differences that you might like this one better. Uh, there's also the factor, I guess, of the extra $2 and the six months of shelf life uh, if you want to factor that in as well. But Anyway, I hope you guys found this video interesting or helpful in deciding whether to pick up this foundation. Uh, let me know if you've tried either one of these and if you're interested in the new one. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this, this video. So uh, I do have the new Kosas foundation or BB cream, whatever it's called, on the way. Uh, that I think is coming in tomorrow, which is Saturday. So uh, I should be filming with that one shortly here as well. Um, I also picked up a new shade of the concealer, so we'll see. So we'll see how well that does. Um, I I think I'm hitting hitting the wall right here. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.